Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? Joey Shirkenbach is back here with another video for you guys. And as promised, I said I was going to be doing a draft recap likely on Sunday after the draft concluded. So here we are. Uh, happy May. It's May Day, first day of May. Hope everyone is well. And that brings us to the conclusion of the 2022 NFL draft wrapped up yesterday. Uh, of course, some undrafted people are signing with teams right now, but the main brunt is over and the, and the actual drafting part is over as well. So, um, wow. So we're going to here to talk about recap of the Ravens draft, but uh, it was an interesting draft this year. I felt like there was a lot of action, a lot of trading back, a lot of trading up, probably more trading up than trading back, but a lot of moves were made. Uh, and then of course, when it comes to, you know, not draft pick moves necessarily, but uh, receivers were on the move. So of course, we're going to start there when it comes to talking about the Ravens. I know it wasn't the first pick we made, but that's by far the most intriguing right now. So, Ravens making a big trade, trading Marquise Brown and a, and a pick of ours to the Cardinals for pick 23. So, at the because now that we know who got drafted, we basically traded Marquise Brown for Tyler Linderbaum. Uh, we took Linderbaum at 23. He's a center, supposedly the best center in the class. So... First off, I'm surprised by this. I know there was a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation that Brown wanted to leave and that he was going to leave. I honestly didn't believe it all. I thought, you know, it was all just, you know, talk, a lot of just like fake stuff and that he would come back. Turns out that the rumors were actually right. He did end up leaving. He did want to leave. So, wow, Marquise Brown is gone. I, I'm really, again, I'm surprised. It kind of shocked me to hear that. Traded him to the Cardinals, I guess because Kyler Murray and uh, Marquise Brown were teammates at college, so uh, that kind of br that kind of brings like the chemistry back. So he wanted to go to Arizona, and he got his wish. I, I mean, he wanted out, he got his wish, but I think Arizona was one of his preferred destinations, and there he is. So at pick 23, we ended up taking Tyler Linderbaum, a center. So why don't we start? I'm going to start with the first pick. I'm going to go basically in order here, talk about each player and how I feel about it, and then I'll do like a final conclusion on how I like how I feel about this draft. So before Linderbaum, at pick 14, we did use pick our pick 14. We took Kyle Hamilton, safety from Notre Dame. So um, a lot of praise for this guy coming out of college. Again, I don't follow college football much. I don't really know too much about him, but he was a big safety prospect. Apparently, he wasn't supposed to drop that far. A lot of people had him going easily in the top 10. Uh, but he fell to us at 14, so I guess we figured while uh, we did already address safety and free agency, we can't we couldn't really pass up on him. So I I don't mind this move at all. Apparently, this guy's really versatile, and that's what that's really our safety's philosophy. You, for to play safety in Baltimore, you got to be versatile. You got to be able to play strong and free safety. I think Marcus Williams is going to be primarily a free safety for us. He's not the guy who's going to like play in the box and deliver a lot of hits. He's more of a ball hawk. Apparently, Kyle Hamilton kind of does both, as does Chuck Clark. But rumors are now speculating that Chuck Clark might be on the move because we've drafted Kyle Hamilton. We also have Brandon Stevens, who flashed as a rookie last year, and we have Geno Stone. So... Uh, there's a chance that Chuck Clark is out of here. Of course, Deshaun Elliott signed with the Lions, so he's gone. Um, yeah, it's definitely possible that Chuck Clark leaves, and honestly, I'm fine with that. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later because I, I have a kind of a theory that might develop here, and we'll see what happens. But regardless, I like the Kyle Hamilton move. Obviously, I would prefer I would have preferred we went with pass rush, but I don't mind getting Kyle Hamilton. Uh, he was kind of the best player available, one of the best players available at that point. He's young, of course, a rookie. He's healthy, got a lot of potential, so I don't mind this move at all. So next, again, we traded up by trading Marquise Brown and a pick for pick 20, uh, oh, pick 25, sorry. Um, Tyler Linderbaum took him center from Iowa, um, told to be the best center in the class. So uh, a little bit surprised that we took Linderbaum because we let Bozeman walk, but then, you know, there was speculation that we were going to sign a free agent uh, center to cover for him. Uh, the biggest, the uh, loudest name was J.C. Treader. He got cut by the Browns, and he's one of the top uh, centers available. We did not take him, and then Harbaugh uh, had a press conference, was, and he was like, no, you know, we like Patrick McCary as the main center. Adding a free agent center is unlikely. I think it was the word he used. So my understanding was, okay, we're just going to roll with McCary, but maybe not. I think this move kind of indicated that we are not sold on McCary yet at center, which I like. I'm not sold on McCary myself. I like him. We extended him for a reason. He's vers he, he's very versatile. He could play literally any position on the line. I think he's played pretty much every position on the line, and he's capable of doing any of 
of them. So I don't, um, I'm glad we extended McCary, but I'm not sold on him as a long-term answer at center. He's had his ups and downs at center, but I'm glad we're not totally banking on him to cover for Bozeman because Bozeman got better and better at uh, throughout his years with us. And last year, he was really good at center. He was dependable. He played, I think, every game besides the uh, Rams game, and that wasn't even injury. He, like, was sick, I think. So... Uh, losing Bozeman hurt, but I'm glad, you know, we kept McCary, of course, and I like drafting Linderbaum. He's young. Maybe he won't, maybe McCary will start this year, but Linderbaum, a uh, very high prospect. He's got a lot of potential. As usual, uh, known for his run blocking. That's the Ravens' philosophy, run blocking. So hopefully he can pass block as well, but I really, I'm more worried about pass blocking for tackles. Um, so I really like this this move as well. I'm glad, you know, more insurance on the offensive line. As I say, build the wall around Lamar Jackson. So we did, we're starting that here. Uh, plus, we already signed Morgan Moses and we did more later on in this draft. So I led this move and Linderbaum, welcome to Baltimore. So next pick, this was in the second round. Uh, pick 13 in the second round. David Ojabo, you know, he was a very top, a very high prospect going into it, but then he tore his Achilles at his pro day and that set him back big time. But we ended, he ended up falling to us. Uh, he's an outside linebacker from Michigan. So uh, I like this move for Ojabo. I know it's risky because, again, he's coming back from a torn Achilles. Um, some some players can come back from that like really soon and be fine. Other players that can really linger. Some players like don't even really come back at all. So we'll see. Uh, but I think he's got a lot going well for him because he's very young. I think this was his first like real injury. So uh, hopefully he can come back and he will very likely not be able to start the season next year, but he could come in in October, November, perhaps December. Um, so I really like this pick as I, you know, how big I am on pass rush. We needed pass rush. Um, and while this guy does not fix it by any means, he definitely adds some potential. Uh, and again, he's, I know he's a second rounder I and mean, he would have been a first rounder, but he's definitely not going to be like the long, the number one starter right out of the gates, but he can back up. He can sit behind Owe and Bowser develop and hopefully be a long-term answer at some point. Uh, and we'll see how he recovers, but I like this move. Um, de dependable when healthy stud at college can get after the quarterback. And again, at least he did in college. And I like, um, us taking a shot at the pass rush. So welcome to Baltimore, David Ojaba. Next pick, this was in round three. We took Travis Jones, who was a defensive lineman from UConn. So, um, another move that I like. Now, mind you, I'll talk more about my, my personal thoughts on the draft uh, after, but um, a lot of speculation is the Ravens had like the best draft. We killed it. So many players fell to us. We took guys who we like this Travis Jones guy was supposed to be a much higher prospect. He fell to us. So a lot of people say we had a really good draft. Well, more on that towards the end. But anyways, Travis Jones, uh, a lot of people were surprised that he fell to us this far. Um, what I really like is Jones seems like a really good athlete. He's not just like a giant lineman who can only stop the run. He does have some pass rush ability. Uh, his pressure rate was pretty good last year. He had like four to five sacks. That's not horrible for an interior lineman. So I like this move. Um, I, we need a defensive lineman because... Brandon Williams is gone, uh, and there's no guarantees that Wolf is able to come back. We'll see what we do with him. Uh, Ellis left as well. So at, before we drafted Jones, we had um, Campbell, who we re-signed, um, Matabuke, and Pierce. Those were the top linemen. Now we have another guy in Travis Jones. Not out of the question that we add another guy in free agency, I guess. So I like getting an interior defensive lineman. We needed pass rush badly, but defensive line in general is we needed it too. So I like getting Travis Jones. I think especially if Wolf cannot come back, uh, he would be a really good fit for us. And again, he's got some pass rush ability. Um, our pass rush has been a problem for a long time, but it's been especially bad uh, up the middle. So hopefully Jones can help with this interior push a little bit. So welcome to Baltimore. Again, I like this move. I have no, had no real complaints about any move so far. Next pick, this was in round four, Daniel Falela. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Tackle from Minnesota. So another guy, uh, people say he, he, was, he flew under the radar. He was supposed to go way sooner, and he fell to the Ravens. So I'll take it, I guess. And this was the big theme, build the wall around Lamar Jackson. Build a wall, build a really strong offensive line. So now we... I, we've definitely made some dents in the offensive line. You know, going into the draft, I was really concerned about the offensive line. We had only made one move to improve, and that was signing Morgan Moses. But now we've added three guys. We've got 
um, Morgan Moses, Tyler Linderbaum, and now Daniel Falela, um, all of which have a lot of potential, especially the two rookies. Uh, Moses is a veteran. He's serviceable. But at this point, I, there's no guarantees that he's the starter. I mean, it was looking like he was going to be the starter before the draft. But drafting Falele, and now again, he's a fourth rounder. So we don't, you know, he, it's going to take a, li- a little bit for him to start, but it's possible. So I think there's going to be some competition there in training camp. And that's what training camp's for. You know, you test guys out, you see how they do, and whoever plays the best wins the starting job. Um, so again, I like this move. We need depth on the offensive line. Injuries, of course, were a huge issue last year in pretty much every position. Um, and I like I like adding depth. You know, we lost Phil and Wave in free agency. So this guy can at least, if Moses starts, he can sit behind Moses, see what he does. And if Moses gets hurt or anyone else gets hurt, he can step in. So I like getting depth. And this guy, again, a, a very high prospect. A lot of scouts spoke very fondly of him. So hopefully he can be uh, a big impact a big impact player for us in the long run. So next, next pick, this was in round four as well. We took Jalen Armour Davis, a cornerback from Alabama. So again, a big depth piece here. I don't think we were expecting him to we were expecting him to be like an instant starter, but uh, depth is really important and I'm glad we took him. Um, again, another guy who people think, you know, he should have gone sooner. We got a steal. So again, I, I don't follow college football, so I can't really confirm nor deny those statements, but you know, I trust, I trust most analysts or I I, more, uh, scouts, I should say. So getting depth was really important. That was, that's, that was a big concern heading into the off season because we have Humphrey and Peters who are both very good, but they're both coming back from serious injuries. We lost Anthony Averett and Tavon Young in free agency. So I think like cornerback three, we also did not resign Jimmy Smith yet. So cornerback three would be like Kayvon Seymour or Robert Jackson, both of which are not going to cut it. So drafting another guy helps. He can add some depth and he'll probably get some playing time because because our depth is so is so thin at cornerback, I will definitely add we'll definitely add some guys and this definitely improves depth. And again, because we don't have much depth he'll probably get some playing time as well. So I like this move, and hopefully we can develop him. Next pick, this was uh, another round four pick, Charlie Kohler, a tight end from Iowa State. So a lot of speculation that we were going to take a tight end at some point because Andrews, as good as he is, um, we need more than one tight end. Nick Boyle, um, you know, again, like Nick Boyle, I think he he plays like a plays like a Raven because he's a monster in run blocking, but he's not a great receiving tight end. And he's also, I mean, that injury that he had in 2020 was gruesome. Uh, and he did come back last year, but he was not himself. I mean, he didn't come back till late in the year. He still missed some games, was not himself at all. Hopefully, he'll be back closer to 100% this year, but there's no promises. So we took another guy to help because, of course, we lost Hayden Hurst. So I like adding another tight end. I think that was important. Get some guy, get a guy who's young, who's healthy, fresh, ready to play, assuming that Boyle is not able to take on a full-time role. So I like, to, I like this move, and Charlie Kohler, we'll see what you can do. Uh, next pick, no really need to talk about this one, Jordan Stout, a punter from Penn State. Um, okay, <laughs> I guess not, not really a lot of value here. Um, I guess it's because Sam Cook, I feel like he's been here for a while, so he's probably going to retire at some point. Morgan Cox retired, what, one, two years ago? So chances are um, more um, uh, Sam Cook is going to retire uh, at some point. This guy's going to be our new punter. Um I guess that's fine. I, I really don't care about punters, if we're being honest. Um, so I guess this guy could be cool. Maybe he's our next punter once Co- uh, Cook retires, and we'll see how it works. Next pick. Uh, another tight end. This was uh, – we had – We'll see. We had, we had six fourth round picks. There was a lot of um, prediction that we were going to trade back or trade up with some of them, but we did not. We used all six of our fourth rounders without moving at all. So um, interesting, but hey, I'll take it. So anyways, uh, another pick in the fourth round, Isaiah Likely, a tight end from Coastal Carolina. That's an interesting last name. Um, so again, another tight end here. So that means we have Andrews, Boyle, Likely, and Kohler as our tight ends right now. Oh, and we also have uh, Eric Tomlinson and Josh Oliver, I think. Actually, I think Josh Oliver may have left. But regardless, um, okay. So clearly we wanted to add more tight end depth. And we get we use the tight ends a lot. It's, it's big on our scheme. I mean, our leading receiver last year was our tight end and Mark Andrews. Now, he plays like a receiver more than a tight end, but he's still a tight end. Uh, again, we use tight ends to block a lot. 
we like to use our strong power formations, and that's where the tight ends really come into play. So I don't mind getting a tight end in it at all. Um, I know that I mean a lot. A lot of people were pulling for us to get a receiver, but by the time we wrapped our wrapped our heads around to it, it's just the receivers were meh. They really weren't intriguing at that point. So uh, I'll more more on that towards the end. But I have no problem with us not taking a receiver at this point. So likely uh, tight end. Um, yeah, of course, being a rookie, he's probably not going to get. I uh, get a lot of playing time this year, but we'll see how he does in training camp, assuming he can stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing what he can do in the long run. All right, second to last one here. Our last fourth-round pick, uh, Damarian Williams, a cornerback from Houston. So, um, again, I like this. You know, DeCosta made it very clear. Cornerback depth, big concern heading into the offseason, and now we've made two solid picks to uh, improve that. Um, Williams, another high prospect coming out of college. Um, supposedly, he was not supposed to drop uh, that far, and he did. Um, hopefully, you know, he can really step in for us. And corners that get dra- that were drafted, so we had um, Williams and Armour Davis. I think both should expect some playing time this year because, again, besides Humphrey and Peters, none of our corners – uh, are really dependable at all. So I, and, and you can't even really depend on Humphrey and Peters right now because, again, they're both coming back from serious injuries. Uh, and Humphrey didn't get hurt till what, week 13, week 14? His was not as serious as Peters, but it's still it was still serious. He needed surgery and everything. So you never know how they come back. So definitely adding another guy was helpful. Uh, and we just got to get all the depth we can, we got to get all the depth possible. So adding him, not a bad idea at all. And hopefully he can be impactful for us. All right, guys, this is our last pick in the sixth round. We took Tyler Beatty, who is a running back from Missouri. So no surprise here. I actually thought we were kind of going to take a running back earlier on. We didn't, which is fine by me. Um, so we visited with Melvin Gordon, what, two weeks ago or something like that? Maybe a little bit more. Uh, and rumors were we, we were really interested. But then he actually just chose to re-sign with the Broncos. So Melvin Gordon was no longer available. And I think with that in mind, we figured, okay, Gordon re-signed, so we're going to go draft the running back at some point. So I'm fine with this. Again, our top two running backs, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, both very good, but coming back from serious injuries and all indications are positive. Supposedly, their rehabs are going just as planned, and they should be back this year, but you never know. And again, both coming back from serious injuries, so anything is possible. And in case they can't come back or they have any setback, we drafted another guy. Uh, Justice Hill is still there too, but he's coming back from a serious injury as well. So we definitely needed to add some. Uh, and then I think Latavius Murray, Devontae Freeman, both are, are free agents. So I think this is probably an indicator that we're not going to re-sign either of them, which is fine by me. They're both old and don't move that well anymore. So uh, I'm cool with this move. I guess I think we also have, um, what is it, Nathan McCrary or whatever his name is. But this is, this is fine. Uh, I doubt he'll you know, make an immediate impact unless Dobbins and Edwards cannot come back. But, you know, depth is important and maybe he'll get some carries in like garbage time or of course in the preseason and he can step in if needed. So, um, to cap out this whole draft, I'm happy with it. Um, you know, we got, got a pass rusher, got, uh, offensive line, got some cornerback depth, all positive there. I do think we need to do more for the pass rush. It's definitely not fixed yet, but I'm glad we addressed it at least a little bit. Uh, and then the biggest question mark right now clearly is receiver. What do we do there? So it looks pretty likely, again, I'm never going to bank on anything, but it looks pretty likely that we're going to add another notable receiver, whether it's a signing, like signing a veteran such as Julio Jones or trading for one, and that would be probably a bigger splash move. Uh, Terry McLaurin and DK Metcalf are probably the most likely. So whether it's trading for one or signing one, very likely we do at least one of them. We signed in some undrafted free agent wide receivers, but that's not going to cut it clearly. We're going to make a more notable one, I would have to think. We traded Marquise Brown and did not draft the receiver. There was a lot of uh, speculation that after trading Marquise Brown at pick 23, we were going to draft the receiver right then and there. We didn't. So it makes it very clear that we had no interest in really drafting a wide receiver. We thought about it, but it, we were not hung up on it. So I would say, it, I mean, DeCosta made it clear that receiver, the receiving room needs some work. I mean, right now, it looks pretty, it's pretty sorry looking. I mean, Rashad Bateman flashes as, as a rookie. He's got a lot of potential. But then you got James Prochet, Devin DuVernay, Talon Walls. DuVernay and Prochet are very, you know, middle of the pack. They're nothing special. Wallace has potential. I like Wallace. I hope we give him more touches. He flashed when he got a chance as a rookie. So we'll see what he can do. But our receiving room is 
again, sorry looking right now and he need, needs a lot of help. So hopefully we can get a more splash guy to be the number one and we can have guys feast as the number two and three. Um, I would say in the next a month or so like maybe it'll be after June maybe not but I do think that we're going to make a move for a wide receiver uh DaCosta made it clear that you know we, we we're going to add some more receivers receivers are important and we're trading Marquise Brown we definitely need to find someone to replace him so I do think that's what we're going to do and we'll see what happens but in general guys I'm happy with this draft a lot of scouts uh would agree they say that we have one of the best drafts we'll see I'm not going to get too excited yet because we got to see these guys actually play football first but we'll see what happens. I trust the process. I trust our picks. Hopefully, everyone can stay healthy. And, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you are new. And I am out. Have a great rest of the day. Happy May. And I will see you in the next one.